Welcome to the Regulating AI podcast, where we bring global diverse voices to create fair, responsible AI regulation around the world. Today, I'm joined with Hadassah Drukarch, the Director of Policy at Responsible AI Institute. Welcome to the podcast, Hadassah. Thank you so much, Sanjay. It's an honor to be here. Wonderful. Uh, Hadassah, we have a global audience uh, around the world, policymakers, think tanks, uh, entrepreneurs. Tell them a little bit about the Responsible AI Institute and what is your role and what do you do there? Yes, thank you for that question. Absolutely. The Responsible AI Institute is an independent and member-based nonprofit that aims to advance responsible AI practices across organizations. Now, I know that sounds really vague and very fluffy to some extent. Mm -hmm. So what we really do is we uh, are an organization that work together directly with different um, uh, companies uh, within industry, government, and across a wide range. When we look at industry, a wide range of industries. Mm -hmm. Think of healthcare, energy, finance, mm -hmm. um, tech native, non-tech native um, organizations. What we essentially do is we provide them the resources, the assessments, the materials, the training they need to be able to understand from that high level of what and why to the how of implementation. So you provide them uh, training and uh, education and things of that nature. Hadassah, how concerned are companies when you talk to them uh, in terms of AI governance, AI ethics, in terms of responsible AI? I mean, the idea is that about 60 to 70 percent of companies are at least Fortune 500 companies are on their way to implementing some form of AI. But is there a concern and can you tell our audience what that is? Yeah, I love that question. I think what's interesting is if you work in this space, I think responsible AI is a topic that's on your mind 24-7. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to believe that for a lot of other organizations, it's just part of the many things they are concerned about. Mm -hmm. um, so when we talk about responsible AI and we try to indicate, you know, what is essentially the return of investment, right? Why would you do AI? Why would you develop, deploy, or use AI in the right way mm -hmm. with the right guardrails in place, with ethical considerations uh, um, taken into account when, mm -hmm. when uh, interacting sure. with it. Um, the interesting thing is that a lot of organizations are understanding that. They do acknowledge the fact that, you know, this is an important topic. They need to do something about it. But what is, at least in our in our opinion, complexity of doing this is that they are busy with so many other things. There's not only the responsible side of it, but there's also the how do we actually, you know, develop or deploy AI in a way that's going to be beneficial for our organization beyond that whole ethics discussion. Mm -hmm. It's just purely a practical and effectiveness uh, a point of, uh, you know, of, yeah. of, the, uh, of, of the discussion. So it's, we're seeing that the uptake is increasing. We're seeing that there's definitely an interest, especially at that brand association level, thought leadership level, being able to put the right controls in place. But it's going to remain a challenge, I think, for the time being. Hadassah, uh, different people have a different definition of responsible AI. From, for our audience, what is your definition or what is the Responsible AI Institute's definition? Is it similar to the NIST or things of that nature? Please tell our audience that. Yeah, I think we're lucky at this rate that there are so many, def well, I'm not sure if you could call this lucky. It could right. be a blessing and a cursing one. Mm -hmm. um, that there are so many definitions for what responsible AI is, AI governance is. Um, I think we follow a lot of these leading organizations like NIST, like the OECD, like mm -hmm. uh, the World Economic Forum and their type of definitions on what responsible AI is. Um, to us, it really um, entails the um, theory, essentially, of AI ethics. So being able to set the principles in a theoretical level of what essentially you, what value you essentially would want to embed within your AI system. Mm -hmm. Um, and at the organizational level as well. So it's, you know, that system level and governance level. And then it is different from what we are now increasingly seeing members, our members ask, and that's AI governance support. Mm -hmm. So there you have the responsible AI level, which is putting in place the principles, putting in place those, those core values mm -hmm. at the theoretical level. And then like, how do you actually do that in practice? So I think we're seeing that shift, right? right. Oftentimes used in this, you know, indistinguishable responsible AI, responsible AI governance. Um, but yeah, that's how we kind of like it. Hadassah, are there specific industries that are more, I mean, articles that are more inclined towards this or more uh, interested in AI, more interested in responsible AI when you look, whether it's manufacturing, healthcare, you know, uh, technology, et cetera. Are there specific industries that you think you work more than others? Um, I would say we definitely work with organizations across the board. It's okay. 
definitely a clear distinction between those that are tech native and non tech native. I think that we are experiencing not only differences in their experience with it, but also just their interest and commitment to responsible AI in the sense of investing in it and being able to see something in return. When we look at the regulated industries and healthcare is a perfect example, you already see that there is a culture and understanding of what risk um, assessment, risk mitigation entails. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've been experiencing that at many different levels than AI already. So mm -hmm. for those organizations in healthcare and finance and energy, um, we're seeing that they work very closely with us. Um, I think logically so, right? They want to be ahead of the curve. They're already used to it. It's easier to adapt to these new requirements. Um, but I would say like maybe there's not exactly a very clear difference between, you know, organizations that are more interested, less interested, more capable, less capable. I do think there's a lot that we can learn from those regulated industries. And at the Ray Institute, we actually have an upcoming panel session. It will be on the 16th of October um, on lessons learned from the regulated industry on how they can implement mm -hmm. or how they are implementing responsible AI practices and what other companies across other industries can learn from that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, that's definitely what I yeah. think. So more for the regulated industries like financial, healthcare, et cetera, is what you're saying. Uh, Hadassa, does the size of an organization, because large organizations have the ability to obviously put that kind of framework what about medium size and maybe smaller size uh, companies? Are they also starting to think about this? I mean, when you talk to companies? Yeah, I think you're definitely right, right? Big organizations mm -hmm. um, with the right budgets in place um, can already make big changes, but they probably already have, right? When you look at other requirements around data, mm -hmm. um, as an example, that have you know preceded the current uh, current discussions, they already have done a lot. Um, and oftentimes they forget that. And then you kind of end up in this discussion of like, well, you need, you know, we need to put something in place for AI. And then our right, question is, you know, what have you already got? Take a look at what you have. Mm -hmm. um, I think being a big organization doesn't necessarily guarantee success, right? Big organizations also come with a lot of other uh, yeah. interesting dynamic, make it harder, actually take action. And I think mm -hmm. at that level, these smaller organizations, you know, small and medi uh, medium sized companies can actually have a benefit, right? There's less um of a barrier organizationally to actually be able to take action the question is where does the budget come from um doesn't necessarily have to be anything major you can already take actions in doing the right things with ai without having to you know bring anybody in necessarily there's so much guidance out there the responsible institute is a non-profit uh we make certain guidance pieces best practices publicly available so there's so much that these organizations can do to put the right controls in place mm -hmm. it's just a question of you know recognizing the importance of that, taking action, and then documenting what you do along that process. But, yeah. No, absolutely. Hadas, large companies that I talk to, when I talk to the C-level execs at larger companies, a lot of them say that they have put in place AI ethics board, privacy boards. What is your experience? Uh, do you see a lot of that? Is that a good thing or what do you recommend uh, when you talk to a company? Should they have an AI ethics board? Most of the people that I talk to, they have mainly internal members within the board. Do you recommend should they have internal and external or should it be internal? What do you suggest, again, for our listeners who are listening to you? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, just to give a little bit of background, maybe. One of the things that we do at the Institute is we have our own assessment frameworks both at the organizational maturity level and then at the system uh, use case level. Mm -hmm. And in performing those, these are very comprehensive frameworks based on the current regulatory uh, landscape. So EU AI Act, the Colorado AI Act, NIST, sure. risk management framework, et cetera. Um, and we've translated these requirements into concrete controls that we perform with a member and try to understand what controls have they put in place. Part of what we do there is doc review their documentation, understand what they've done. But another part of that is stakeholder engagement sessions. So sitting at the table with their internal stakeholders to better understand, um, you know, the people responsible for certain practices, people responsible for certain components of your, a, you know, AI program. Mm -hmm. um, what do they have to say? What do they know in addition to the documentation that we've seen? And if we poke holes through the documentation, who can answer for those questions? Mm -hmm. Notice in having those stakeholder sessions is that oftentimes if we don't bring everybody to the table, you know, the finger is pointed from one person to the other. Like, I think they know more about it. Or like, you know, I think they know. You'll have to talk to them. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot, you know, there are a lot of actors in this whole right. in this whole scene. So putting in place one of those committees, putting in place a board, putting in place any type of group of people across the organization that are involved and are responsible for components of this program will be extremely beneficial. 
if you know, just looking at it from our perspective at the Institute, mm -hmm. when we perform an assessment with them, of course, that's beneficial to us, but it's beneficial to them as well in order to align on certain core uh, principles, core values, core practices that they want to establish across the organization, mm -hmm. rather than saying, you know, we're having it dispersed across the entire company. We bring the right people together. At least there's one central node um, that can be responsible, that can direct the efforts from there and further. So, Hadassah, just as a follow-on to this, do you think responsible AI is a multidisciplinary effort within an organization? Yeah, I would say absolutely. It is a multidisciplinary. And generally, where do you see it getting initiated? When, who is coming to you? Is it the board? Is it C-level execs, et cetera? Uh, again, when our viewers are listening, they will also understand where it needs to be initiated. Where do you see the initiation coming from? Yeah, I think based a little bit on what you were just asking, right? It's like, should they have, should companies have a centralized committee or board mm -hmm. um, that is, you know, uh, um, responsible and is leading these a responsible AI or AI governance efforts? Um, it's not the same across every single company. Some have a committee like this, some have a, a board like this, some don't. Mm -hmm. So likewise, the demand for our help, for our support, is really different across every single organization. It's a long way to say. Yeah. It really depends. Um, we're seeing that a lot of the AI governance teams um, are directing questions to us. Like you'd see like with an organization, it would be an AI governance or you're now seeing a responsible AI team. A lot of our member organizations have those types of teams. Mm -hmm. The demand is coming from there, but they're connected to other teams, of course. Right. And it's something that they discuss internally. And it's, you know, when we get back to that topic of return on investment of doing of doing AI responsibly, there's a broader discussion to be had within the organization, of course, right. that understand like, is it worth the money that we're investing into, you know, doing this right? As opposed to saying, we're going to do AI right in the first place. And then we'll take a look at these, you know, responsible and ethical practices around it. Um, so it comes from one place. That's my experience. Like one place, if those teams exist, hmm. but then it's like a broader discussion to be held within an organization uh, of itself. So, in your see, Hadassa, the EU now has got the EU AI Act. In the US, and I've talked to a lot of members of Congress, we are not going to get an increment, uh, a comprehensive. et cetera. How do you uh, help companies? I mean, companies, large companies can hire, you know, legal departments, et cetera, to deal with this patchwork, you know whether it's in China or India or EU, et cetera. What is your message when it comes to companies in dealing with this kind of a patchwork of regulations? Uh, what do you say to them? Yeah, we get that question all the time, right? Like, what do we look at first? Mm -hmm. I think um, an, important, an important way of approaching this is honestly reaching out. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that I think a lot of companies you know, trying to implement the requirements that are being set, but also a lot of organizations that are trying to support these types of, of companies in implementing the regulatory requirements are trying to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is that there's already a, a lot of really good work out there. Mm -hmm. um, think of the OECD's work around, you know, mapping the different regulatory requirements mm -hmm. and trying to indicate, like, you know, what do you have to look sure. out for? But if I just bring it back to our own work, one of the things that we do is try to make sense as a nonprofit of this landscape mm -hmm. by integrating a wide range of different jurisdictional frameworks mm -hmm. into our assessments. Translate mm -hmm. that into the controls that an organization needs to put in place and say, if you need to comply with the EU AI Act, right? There's a lot of resources that tell you whether or not you fall within the scope. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to read through the actual act itself, which I can imagine is slightly awesome. Um, But then in terms of actual implementation, our assessment is an example, but there are plenty of other organizations out there um, at the nonprofit level or the you know for-profit, more industry, like uh, consultancy style, Mm -hmm. uh, um, services that they offer that can help an organization with this. I would say try to leverage the community, try to leverage the organizations that are, you know, publicly supporting um, you as an organization, your team, um, and make use of that as a starting point. And if you see that you need more help, there are plenty of other options, but there are so much out there already. Uh, I'd be happy to offer resources, happy to, you know, give you access to, to some of the, the materials that we have. Um, but I think that really is like the key here. Uh, don't reinvent the wheel, but take a look what's already out there. So what you're saying is uh, educate yourself, but also reach out to external sources that might be there, Hadassah. Yeah. Um, Hadassah, uh, what would be one actionable thing that you could leave for our audience in terms of 
companies that are looking at employees, chief AI officers, CEOs who are listening to an expert like you, what should, what would be an actionable item for them to uh, look at? That's a difficult question. I would say so many. <laughs> okay, uh, one. Uh, one. Yeah. Uh, because we will get you back for another conversation <laughs> that you could put on uh, six more. All right. Um, that sounds good. Um, I would say, and I mean, as I said, right, there are many. So this is definitely probably not the most important one, probably not the most actionable one. But I do think it's something worth noting. And I don't think that it's being said enough. And that is that, of course, this landscape is challenging. It's an iterative process. It will always be iterative, right? We're never going to say, now I've done it right. Mm -hmm. No organization, if, they, if they're able to say that, then something's not right. Mm -hmm. um, so what I would say within that challenging landscape, I think it's important to be able to speak out about those problems that you're facing. What we see at the Institute, one of the, I think the power that we, and the, the, the unique value that we offer is that a lot of the work that we do is essentially, you could say crowdsourced, meaning that we work with our members to offer them the value that they need to say to them, this is what you should do. But likewise, being able to work with them is allowing us to understand the pain point. Mm -hmm. Take those pain points into the work that we do so we can communicate that. It's essentially just a loop of us working together mm -hmm. and bring it back and that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. So I'd say in this process, beyond education, beyond you know understanding the right controls, putting in place first measures, taking the first steps, I would say speak out about the pain points um, because you'll find out that a lot of other organizations are facing the same issues. And I think just like that panel I mentioned before, right, about learning from regulated industries, there's a lot that you can already learn from the practices that others have in place. And that doesn't have to be in the detailed level, right? I know that there's a lot of confidential information in this whole space. Um, but even at the highest level, you can learn so much from what organization X is doing, what organization Y is doing, and try to implement some of their practices within your own if it fits. So that's what I say. I would say. I'm not sure if that's helpful, but I would say that would no, be Well, I think it is. Uh, take uh, iterative steps, uh, reach out. Uh, learn. Um, I think those are uh, fantastic uh, inputs. Before we let you go, just a yes. quick, uh, maybe a few lightning round oh, of God. questions, which you are used to by now. Yes. So one, one word answer. Privacy or transparency? Oh, transparency all the way. Transparency. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, ethics or regulation? Oh, I would say... I'm going to be the real lawyer, right? What does regulation entail? But let's go with regulation for now, and I'd be happy to have a discussion with you about this later. <laughs> okay. Human-generated data or synthetic data? Synthetic, I think. Which one? Synthetic. Synthetic data. Yeah. Wow. Open source, closed source. That's the final one. Uh, open source what? Open source. <laughs> awesome. Adasa, thank you so much. Your insight into uh, how companies can really take the big step to you know, call, walk, run towards building responsible AI systems, which can be a real competitive edge. It's really, really uh, helpful to our audience. We hope to get you back. And thank you so much for taking the time for being on the podcast. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thanks for the great work that you're doing as well. Uh, thank you, Adasa. Thank you.